Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First. Such a good day outside today. It's a little bit rainy here in the Mid-South, but I hope uh, you guys are ready for a wonderful day today. It's going to be a good one. Uh, we're talking about afterlife. Um, is there an afterlife? Do you believe in an afterlife? More importantly, why do you believe in an afterlife? If you believe in heaven, you know, why do you believe in heaven? It's important. If you don't believe in heaven, why do you not believe in heaven? What are you basing that decision on in your life? Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining us recorded. Hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. So many people are enjoying uh, hearing about this and uh, learning more, knowing more, or at least considering more. I, I really, truly don't want to push off my beliefs on you. Obviously, I'm coming from my perspective, though. So share this out on your page. Will we know each other in heaven? What's heaven like? Is there a heaven? Put it on your timeline and make it, uh, make it public so everybody can see it. All right, I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to begin by saying, if I were the enemy of your soul, if I were the enemy of your soul, I would try to convince you that there were no afterlife, that there was nothing. If I were the enemy of your soul, I would try to convince you that there was no heaven and there was no hell. Because if I could convince you as the enemy of your soul, if I could convince you that this life is all there was, then you would love this life. You would love it. You would want to live it to the fullest because there's nothing else. Get everything that's mine. Take everything that's mine. Do whatever it takes to make me pleased, make me happy. If I were the enemy of your soul, I would try to convince you that there was no hell. So that you would love this life and you would have no urgency to share your faith. I want you to hashtag heaven, hashtag hell, hashtag faith. Hashtag afterlife. I want you to ask yourself, if you believe in afterlife, why do you believe that? What are you basing that on? If you do not, which is equally as important, if you do not believe in afterlife, heaven, hell, anything goes beyond this, what makes you believe that? What are you establishing that decision on? Today, we're going to start talking about heaven. Now, I want to kind of say this. I'm going to do my best to describe heaven, but words are not adequate. I'm going to use scripture. This is going to be the first in this series on heaven. Uh, so I'm going to kind of start it off with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, talking about heaven. This is what the scripture says. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I want you to hashtag prepared. God has prepared something. God is doing something. There is a God. If there is a creation, there is a creator. If there's a plan, there's a planner. If there's, you know, if there's, if this is not accident. You're not accident. And God says, I'm preparing something for my creation. I'm preparing something for my children. But what I'm preparing is so mind-blowing. Heaven is so mind-blowing that for me to sit here and try to... For me to sit here and try to appeal to your senses about something we've never experienced before... It just seems kind of whack, okay? I want you to think about the most beautiful place in the world you've ever been. I want you to think about the best you've ever felt. And then I want you to think about being in the best place you've ever been, the best you ever felt, with no sin in the world, with the absence of pain, with the absence of guilt, with the absence of shame, with the absence of, you know, regret. I want you to think about a place that you, not someone else, but you, you, Sasha, listen, you, you, Corrine, 
you Candace, you Loretta, you Chip, you Doug, you Shelly. Guys, I want you to imagine a place where not some other version of you, but you, God who created you, the you you are, being in this place of beauty, in this place with no guilt, shame, regret, condemnation, fears, you know, guilt, and this beautiful place with no memory of failure, of hurt, of need, of lack. Just imagine God is preparing a place for you that will be for you. It will be for you. And it will be a place where the frustrations of this world will no longer hold you down. It'll be a place where the failures are not permitted to, to, to hold you down. It'll be a place where it's going to be hard for me to describe this place to you and appeal to your senses, your body, your mind, your wills, your emotions. It's going to, <laughs> it's going to be hard to appeal to you and your senses for a place that I have never sensed and that Paul describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, is a place my eyes haven't seen, my ears haven't heard. It's not even entered my imagination. Guys, there's going to come a day when the failures and the frustrations of this world no longer haunt you, and you're still going to be you, but you're going to be you without sin. You're going to be you without fear. You're going to be you without rejection. You're going to be you without those memories. You're going to be you without that past. You're going to be you without that regret and frustration and pain and hurt and sadness. You're going to be you. You're still going to be you, but you're going to be in a place with him. You're going to be with him. You're going to be in the Garden of Eden without the option to fail. You're going to be in the Garden of Eden without the option to choose to leave him. You see, we're placed in the Garden of Eden with this free will to choose. And so we choose on this side of heaven. We choose him. And he chooses us. And I don't want to get into whether you're predestined or you're Calvinist or you're Arminian. Give me a break. Those two guys aren't even old as a hiccup in eternity. John Calvin and Arminianism and all this stuff ain't old as a hiccup in eternity. That, that, let me tell you what that is. C-R-A-P. That is crap. You need to understand that there's a God that's bigger than our doctrine, bigger than our theology, bigger than what we think, bigger than what we figured out, and bigger than our plans, and bigger than how we put him in a box, and bigger than, oh, well, God does it this way, this way, this way. He's God. He does it his way. God doesn't do it this way, this way, this way. God does it his way, okay? He, he does it his way. We're going to be in heaven with him. And we will have made our decision, and he's made his decision. His decision was made on the cross, and then we're going to be there without the opportunity to fail. You're not even going to have to worry about choices because all choices are going to be good. John chapter 14. I feel so inadequate to describe this to you. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Hashtag troubled. Guys, I'm going to ask you something. How many of you ever had your hearts troubled? Let's get real here, guys. Let's get super duper real here. Some of you, how many of you ever thought, you know, this life ain't worth living? How many of you ever thought that nobody cares? Nobody loves me. Nobody likes me. Uh, people just do things because they want something from me. They just want me to do something for them. They are just manipulating me. They're just doing this. Listen, listen to what God's word says. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Guys, there's so many troubling things here for our hearts. Man, our minds are so cluttered with what's happened to us and what's not happening to us and what's happening for someone else and what's not happening for someone else. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. That's the simplicity of gospel. That's the simplicity of a relationship with God. The simplicity of this is not whether you're Calvinist or whether you're Armenian or whether you're atheist or whether you're agnostic or whether you're Baptist or whether you're Presbyterian or whether you're Catholic or whether you're this or whether you're that. Don't let your hearts be troubled. All those factors come in to make your heart feel troubled. Trust in God. The simplicity of Scripture is trust in God. Trust Him. Jesus says, if you trust in God, trust also in me because Jesus was saying, you know, I am God. Listen to what he says. There is more 
than enough room in my father's home. Many, many versions say, in my father's house there are many mansions. My grandfather and my mama's tombstones say, in my father's house there are many mansions. And that's where we get this. We're going to go, God's got a mansion just over the hillside in that bright hay. Okay, so, yeah, all right, cool. If you want a mansion in heaven, go get it. I'm going to get a tiny house. Um, but what it literally means is, is there is more than enough room in God for you. God has more than enough space in him for you. Heaven's going to be where I am. And for those of you who trusted in Jesus where you are. But more importantly, that's where he'll be. Trust in God, Jesus says. Trust also in me. In my father's house, there's more than enough space for you. There's more than enough room for you. If this were not so, Jesus said, I would have told you. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. Imagine this place he's been preparing. God, God is preparing a place, not for a different version of you, but you, you without sin. And when everything is ready, Jesus says, I will come and get you. He's still making ready so that you will always be with me. And where I am, you will be. And you will know where I'm going. And Thomas says, I don't know where you're going. How can we know where you're going? And Jesus says to him, Thomas, you know the way. He said, well, do I go right or do I go left? Am I Calvinist? Am I Armenian? Thomas, 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 you know the way. Well, is it through the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, the non-dominated church, the charismatic church has got the cool website or the, you know, the independent Baptist that don't or is it the ones who cut their hair or they wear makeup or, you know, what is the way? Can I do something here? Can I put something on or take something off to get to heaven? Thomas says, Jesus, you keep telling us we know the way. Which way is the way? Is it the New King James Version or is it the Old King James Version? Is it the New American Standard? Can we trust the message? I mean... Thomas, Thomas, whoa, 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 slow down. Okay, so is it five songs set or eight? Do we sing the, is it oceans? Caleb, surely Caleb is the way. Thomas, you know the way to heaven. Thomas says, Jesus, I don't know the way to heaven. What's the way to heaven? He says, you know me. I am the way. Jesus is the way. Paul's not the way. Peter's not the way. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not the way. James, the brother of Jesus, is not the way to heaven. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is not the way to heaven. Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas, you know the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 7, says this. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. John is seeing into the future. Guys, there's going to come a day when there will be a new heaven, a new earth. Listen to me. Heaven is going to transition. Earth is going to transition. There will be a new heaven. There will be a new earth. And the old earth and the old heaven will have disappeared. And the sea itself will be gone. And a holy city known as the New Jerusalem will come down out of heaven from God. Like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And John says, then I heard a loud shout from the throne of God saying, look, God's home is now among his people that God is going to choose to once again tabernacle that God is going to choose once again to place his presence in that God in his forms in his body in his triune spirit father son holy spirit is going to come to the new earth where you and I will be not floating on clouds, not playing on harps, not singing the first and third. We're not going to be in a choir all day long. Heaven is not 
not going to be boring, that God himself is going to come to this new earth and God's home is going to be among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people and he will be their God, referring back to Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, I mean chapter 6, verse 7, where he says the fulfillment of all this chaos, all this turmoil, all this tribulation, all this stuff you went through, all this heart being troubled, all this sadness, all this sin, all this darkness, all this hurt, all this pain, all this rejection, all this depression, all this oppression, all this regret, guilt, and condemnation, that the result of all that in Christ Jesus is that I will be your God. You will be my people. I will dwell with you. I will live with you in a place that will have my presence, not my Bible, not my book, not my gospel, not my strategy, not my religion, not my faith. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. We're going to be there. And we will understand clearly who he is and who we are. You don't even know who you are. You will never know who you are as long as you are trapped strapped to all this crap that belongs here on this earth. In this world you'll have tribulation. But in the new earth there will no longer be tribulation. You will not be held back and you'll be just like your daddy who you were made in the image and the likeness of God. You will know him and he will know you. (laughs) Verse 4. He will wipe every tear away from your eyes, guys. Have you ever shed a tear? You know, all tears don't come out of your eyes. Some tears drip down the back of your soul. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death. I want you to think about that. We all want the cure for cancer. We all want the cure for Alzheimer's. We all want to try to you know, have people live and be here as long as they can be here. There will be no more death. Hash, no more death. Hashtag, no, there will be no more in the new earth. There will be no more death. Done. There will be no more death. No more sorrow. Hashtag, no more sorrow. There will be no more sorrow. The mistakes that we made in this world will no longer be with us. <laughs> the, the wounds that were uh, inflicted against us, will, the, the, there will be no more sorrow. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. As I continue over these next couple of days to describe heaven to you, I want you to ask questions. Do you have questions about heaven? Do you have questions about hell? Do you have questions about eternity? If you do, I want you to go to either the Pastor Doug page you're on now or go to the Pray First official family page. I want you to post your questions there and I'll answer them throughout the next couple of days. Tomorrow on Pray First. Tomorrow on Pray First. Tomorrow on Pray First, I'm going to talk about will you know your family who is in heaven? Will you know them? Will they be the same them? Will you be the same you? How will God work out multiple marriages? (laughs) Will, come here, come here. I'm going to talk to you about children in heaven. I'm going to talk to you about if there is a silver or gold lining to how many children that have, that didn't get to be here with us. Let's put it that way. For whatever reason, are they there? Will your friends who were friends and they trusted Jesus, are they gonna be there? Will you know them? Will they know you? Will they say, hey Doug, holy crap, you got here? I don't believe it. You know, junior high, I didn't think you were gonna be here. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about Who's in heaven? And what version of them will be in heaven? Will will we know mama? Will will we know papa? Will will, will we see them? Will we really know? Tomorrow we're going to talk about that. We're going to take it a couple of steps further. Guys, heaven will not be boring. It's not just going to be a sea of glass and streets of gold. That'd get old pretty quickly. Okay? Heaven is where God is. Father, right now in the name of Jesus... I pray that as 
we look at this, that you give us a fresh revelation of heaven, that you give us a supernatural revelation of heaven because we don't understand heaven and we, don't, we, we, can't, we can't describe something that, that we haven't seen, heard, or it has entered our mind. Heaven's going to be mind-blowing. So, Father, to appeal to touch and smell and taste and our hearing and to, to appeal to those senses that we have, man, that, that, it just don't work well. But God, in you, there's more than enough room for me. In you, there's more than enough room for them. Father, teach us to long for heaven, to wonder about heaven, to seek and search about heaven in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I'm going to see you back here tomorrow. We're going to try again to continue the futility of describing something like this. But I'm going to go through the word. I'm going to bring out everything about heaven from the word. I'm going to describe it to the best of our abilities that we have from the revelation that God has given us. So I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Invite your friends and family to come. Tomorrow is going to be huge. Some of them tomorrow will make their decisions on destiny. So I love you guys. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. I'm in the auditorium of our Olive Branch campus right now. If you're like, where did he just go? That's where I am. So bye-bye. See you tomorrow.